So you can come into child's pose on your mat. So just coming to, you can choose if you want to do a wide-legged child's pose or knees together. Wide-legged will help the hips start to open. Child's pose will give you more restful posture because you can lay on top. And then just walking the hands out. But not, they're not going to be active yet, so let the elbows and our, uh, forearms fall down and then simply place the forehead on the mat. So just surrendering down to our mat and to our practice this morning. And we're going to, as we did on Tuesday, um, we're wrapping up our journey through the yamas and the niyamas with the last niyama, which is Ishvara Pranidhana, which translates to surrender. So truly surrendering into our practice this morning, coming into some deep breaths, relaxing the jaw and all the muscles in the face, letting the heart melt towards the mat, trying to release any tension you might be holding in the hips or in the core and just taking some deep breaths here. Ishvara Pranidhana is the jewel of surrender. Ultimately, this guideline invites us to surrender our egos, open our hearts and accept the higher purpose of our being. So I'd like to take you into a little visual visualization. So think about a time perhaps when you were watching a sunset, hiking in the mountains, holding a very happy baby, or caught up in something you love to do when you suddenly, when suddenly time disappeared and you just disappeared with it. Your actions, your thoughts, and the activity you are engaged in lined up and became one entity of harmony and perfection. So find a moment in your mind. This is the rhythm of surrender. The yogis tell us that we can live this way all the time, unless we're getting in our own way. So life wants to surprise, delight, and grow us in ways far beyond our imagination. When we release our rigidity and our need to control, when we joyfully engage in life as it comes to us, and when we place our egos in devotion to let that which is greater, we can begin to taste the bounty of this jewel. So continuing to focus on that surrender can mean something different for everyone. Maybe they simply stay present in the moment and surrender the upcoming activities in your life. It might be surrendering to some worry that is maybe overwhelming at this time and just staying in the present moment of, of being exactly where you need to be and doing exactly what you need to be doing right now. Now there might be something more important to you that you want to surrender. So finding something, an intention that you really connect with this morning that can help you make this practice a little bit deeper than just the physical movement. And let's breathe into that intention about five more rounds of breath in this child's pose. On your next inhale, we're gonna push into the hands and make this a bit more active. So the arms start to lift off the mat. You engage the biceps and the triceps and the forearms. You feel the shoulder blades come down into the back and come away from the ears. And you feel a pulling sensation in the hands. And with that pulling, you're gonna slither yourself forward, coming all the way forward, into a little baby cobra. So baby cobra, I'm pushing into the tops of my feet, my knees are lifting, I'm pushing into my pubic bone, my belly button is trying to lift towards my back, my shoulder blades are squeezed together, my elbows are tucked in tight, I feel it opening across my chest and my throat, and then as I exhale, I engage the core to use my upper body to push myself back into that child's pose. 
So really taking your time here to find that posture. So staying, keeping those elbows in tight, rolling forward, keeping those shoulder blades squeezed together, push into the tops of the feet. And as you exhale, engage and lift the core, staying low, push back through the arms. Just two more rounds of this. Inhale, slithering forward. You might grow that cobra a tiny bit, lifting the heart, using the hands a bit more. Exhale, push back, sink the hips down. One last round. Inhale to slither forward, opening, lifting. Exhale, pushing back into child's pose. We're gonna come forward now onto our hands and knees but we're gonna lean sort of into a supported plank. So my hips are gonna drop and my knees are gonna stay on the ground, but I'm keeping that straight line from the crown of my head to my knees. And we're gonna take, we're gonna try for five chaturanga push-ups. So you keep the elbows in nice and tight, come to that 90 degree angle, and then push back up. All right, coming down, push back up. Coming down for three, push back up. If you want a little extra challenge, you might come to the toes for two more. Push back up, last one, down to that 90. Push back up, Whew. drop the knees coming into puppy pose. So hips stay over our knees and we drop the heart forward, stretch the hands and sink the heart down. Drop either the chin or the forehead. Should feel a nice stretch through the shoulders, the upper back, the tricep. Just each exhale, feel that heart sink a little bit deeper. Next inhale, we're gonna slither all the way forward. Open the arms out to a T, kick that right foot up, right hand comes in so you can roll on to that left shoulder. So now my right knee is pointing up. Left leg is straight. I feel a little bit of a spinal twist release in the middle of my back. That left hand's pointing down towards the ground, facing down. And I'm relaxing my neck. Just keeping all the stretch in that left shoulder. Inhale, coming back through center, just taking it to the other side. Use that left hand to help you roll over. Foot's on the ground, knee points up. Deep breaths, you should feel a nice ringing out in the middle of that back. If this isn't deep enough for you, you can always lift that hand up and over and try to clasp the hands. For some of you that might work, for others it might be fine just to stay right here. Inhale, coming back through center. So from here we're gonna come up to down dog. So you have a couple options. One is you can use the knees and try to do one more of those push-ups and then push back. Or you might be able to tuck the toes and come all the way up through a push-up, then come back into your downward facing dog. So we're gonna flow this with our plank a few times. And you really wanna think about lifting the hips, rolling through the spine, almost like a cat cow action, and then coming forward into your plank. Lifting the hips, bringing yourself rolling back into down dog. So take it nice and slow, keep the breath long. Exhale to lift and push back. Let's take one more round. Exhale, once you find that down dog, just pedal the feet out. Maybe wag the tail. Maybe lift up one leg or the other. And then come into some stillness. So finding that hip distance of your feet. You can bend the knees as much as you need to to get that straight line from the, rib, the wrist crease to the tailbone. And slowly over time or throughout the practice, you might be able to straighten those knees a little bit more. You want to avoid just trying to straighten the legs and then the back arches. So really focus on that straight back. Inhale to the tiptoes. Exhale to the front of your mat. Coming into a forward fold, release the neck, release the head. You can shake it out a little bit here. 
And then inhale, half lift, plant the hands either on the ground, the shins, or the thighs. Get that 90 degree angle. Nice long neck. So we're looking down here rather than crunching the neck this way. Exhale, plant the hands, one last fold here. Inhale, slight bend in the knees. Inhale yourself all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. So we'll come through three Surya Namaskaris or three sun salutations to warm ourselves up. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Inhale, half lift, nice long neck. Exhale, plant the hands, step yourself back to plank. You can lower the knees first, just as we did before, coming into that Chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, push back down, either through the knees or that push up into downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. In this time of stillness, find a focal point, find that intention. Next, inhale, come to the tiptoes. Exhale, step to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep fold, bring the crown to the ground. Inhale, sweep it all the way up. Nice long hands, palms come to touch. Exhale, hands to heart center. Coming into round two. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, hinge, dive it down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step walk or float it back to plank. Maybe drop the knees, maybe keep them lifted, lowering slowly down. Inhale, cobra, growing that up a little bit, keeping the core engaged to protect the lower back. Exhale, down, tuck the toes, push yourself up in back. Three deep breaths here. Next, inhale, coming to the tiptoes. Exhale, step walker, float it forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Inhale, bring yourself all the way up. Push the palms together. Exhale, hands to heart center. Close the eyes. Let the shoulders melt away from the ears. Feel the heart and chest lift nice and tall while the lower part of your upper back melts down and away. So feeling a lifting in the front and a nice compressed push down in the back. A little tuck of the tailbone, lift of the pubic bone so you feel that core lifting. Feel the tops of your kneecaps lifting. So although this is a very seemingly inactive pose it is actually very active we're pushing into the palms and we'll come into that third and final round of Surya Namaskar A as you're ready inhaling up maybe adding in that chaturanga and upward facing dog, hips off the ground. Take your time to finish that third round and come back into that active mountain pose. Playing with closing the eyes, keeping the feet nice and close together. Noticing if you can avoid a little swaying and staying nice and grounded and rooted in the feet. We're gonna go through three rounds of 
Sorry, Namaskar B today, so our sun salutation B as well. We're really going to build some heat. So inhaling the arms up overhead. Exhale, hinge at the hip, swan dive down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hand, step walk or float it back to plank. Lowering all the way down. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, lift the hips, push back. Inhale, right leg rises. Exhale, stepping in between the hands, plant the back heel. Inhale, warrior one, palms together, all the way up. Gaze can come to the thumbs if it feels okay on the neck. And then you follow that gaze as the hands come back down on the exhale. Plant the hands, step it back to plank. Now we're gonna do a vinyasa each time here, but if it's too much, you can push back to down dog. We're gonna exhale, lower down. Inhale, exhale. Taking it to the other side. Inhale, left leg rises. Exhale, step it through. Plant that back heel, palms together. Inhale it up, warrior one. Exhale, lowering the hands down. Step it back, flow or push back. Downward facing dog. Now we take our three deep breaths. Feel free to sigh them out. Inhaling to the toes. Exhale, step walker, float it forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep fold. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the top. Exhale, hands to heart center. So that was one. We got two more. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step walker, float. Back to plank. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, push it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg rises. Exhale, step it through, drop the back heel. Inhale, follow that gaze if you can, or the thumbs. Exhale, hands come down. Step it back to plank. Either push back down dog or can flow. You can always drop the knees here too. Lower it down, inhale, exhale, push back. Inhale, left leg rises, exhale, come to step it in between, drop that heel, palms together. This will challenge your balance a little bit here, following the gaze, the gaze following the thumbs. Exhale, coming back down, step it back, flow, or push back. Three deep breaths here. Try to sink those heels down. Keep a little micro bend in the knees and the elbows to protect the joint. Belly button to spine, engaging the core. Inhale to the toes. Exhale to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep fold. Inhale, bring it all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Let's pause for a second here. Bring the thumbs to the heart center. Push into those hands. Ground the feet. Close the eyes if it feels safe. Nice and tall. Feel like you've got a little string connected to the crown of your head and it's pulling you and lengthening you. That spine is getting space between each vertebra. We'll come into our third and final round of Surya Namaskar B here, inhaling up. Exhale, hinge, dive down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step walker, float. Lowering down. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, engage the core, lift the hips. Push it back. Inhale, right leg rises, three-legged dog. Exhale, step it through, plant that back heel, palms together, inhale it up. 
Exhale, lowering it back down. Plant the hands, step it back. You can always skip this flow or lower the knees. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, push it back. Inhale, left leg rises. Exhale, step it through. Plant that back heel, palms together. Inhale it up. Exhale, follow the thumbs, bring it down. Step it back, last little flow. And keep that core engaged during this flow to really protect the lower back. Coming to three deep breaths. Inhale to the toes. Exhale to the front. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, bring the arms all the way up to the top. Exhale, hands to heart center. We're going to take the feet as wide as your mat. Bring the hands to the hips. Inhale, nice and tall. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Bending slowly forward, all the way down, taking it nice and slow to ensure that we keep that back flat. From here, you can grab opposite elbow or bring the peace fingers to the big toe, wherever feels good. You can also wrap the arms back behind. But just take a few deep breaths here. Try to shake out the head, release any tension you're holding there, and just enjoy the inversion and keep those deep breaths going. Just reconnecting with our breath here, remembering to keep the breath and movement as married as we can. I know it gets hard to do at times, but really focusing our energy towards that as much as we can. I'm gonna slowly heel to the feet back together Walk the hands a little bit forward so you can step the feet back into downward facing dog. So uh, can you go ahead and drop to the knees for a second? We're going to work on a little bit of upper body. Um, just a little bit of a practice here today that I don't know if we've done before. But we're going to come into dolphin pose. So it looks like downward dog, except you drop the forearms down. So from here, the goal is maybe to take a little baby step in, but if you need to take a baby step out today for the first time, that's okay. So let's come into dolphin pose, and your gaze can be back at your toes, or if you're someone who's working towards inversions like this, you might look straight down at the mat. Otherwise, just keep the head relaxed. All right, so try to keep the elbows directly under your shoulders instead of splaying out. And we're gonna play with just taking five leg lifts on the right hand side. So we're engaging our core here. We're using our upper body to keep us right here. And then we're gonna take it to the left side. If you need to, yes, you can drop the knee down and take it right here, okay? One more side, five, four, three, two, with control, engaged core, one. All right, drop the knees, come into a child's pose. You can wrap the arms back around the legs. Let the arms totally relax. One more deep breath here. And then we'll stretch those arms out. We'll come into down dog for our standing flow. So, this side. Gonna inhale that right leg up into three legged dog. So, pause here for a moment. Let that left heel sink down, push up through that right leg. And then, as you exhale, curve and round, bring that knee towards the chest, come through plank then step it down. You can always move that forward if you need to. We're gonna drop the back heel to prepare for warrior two. So the back left foot is parallel with the edge of your mat. 
and then inhale that left arm up coming into warrior two so warrior two we want to try to get the knee over the ankle and get this leg as straight as possible so we don't want to have a bend in there and then you should feel a nice opening along this left hip flexor the gaze then goes out over that right middle finger this um your gait can be much closer to if it needs to be Whew. so feeling that strength in our warrior two gazing out over that front palm or front middle finger we're going to flip that front palm and come to reverse now the lower body stays exactly where it is I just engage in this side bend. So we want to keep it out of the lower back by keeping it just in the side. So we're not leaning backwards, we're leaning to the side. And then as you exhale, we're going to come into side angle. So side angle level one, we put our forearm on our top thigh and then reach our hand up overhead. And you should get this really nice straight line all the way from the edge of your foot to the tip of your fingers. And we're going to do more side angles so we can all start at level one even if we want to bring that hand to the ground let's take it nice and easy so we're going to flow this a little bit inhale to reverse you'll notice my lower body is staying exactly the same i'm just giving a really nice stretch in my side body and i'm engaging and using my obliques and my core to make this action happen I'm kind of cruising here. Take it nice and slow with your breath. Inhale. And exhale. All right, this time as we come to reverse, we're going to straighten that front leg. It should feel really good. And you now see our lower body is in triangle form. So then we're going to come forward, reach, reach, reach forward, then drop that hand down. So it's okay if the hand is on the shin, the ankle, even the thigh. And then we bring that arm straight up. So the goal is to kind of stack our shoulders here and not have our body collapsing downward, but instead imagine that you're pushing your shoulder blades together and back into a wall. All right, it's not about how low can you go, how much can you stack those shoulders, open that heart. One more deep breath here, the gaze can be down at the ground or if you want to challenge your balance you look up to that left thumb if it's okay on the mat all right inhale bend that knee reverse all the way back exhale windmill it down and then you can step it back here to downward dog where you can add in that flow and then we're in downward facing dog one deep inhale here exhale let it go inhale that left leg rises we'll take it to the other side feel that nice stretch through that right heel exhale coming forward step it in between the hands plant the foot back here to prepare for warrior two opening up the hips here sinking in knee over ankle open the arms up gaze over that left middle finger we're here for two deep breaths so see if you can sink it a little bit Feel that nice stretch in our right hip flexor. Inhale, that front palm rises to come back into our reverse nice stretch. Lower body stays the same. And then we'll exhale coming into our side angle. Plant that forearm, but keep this really active. Bring that arm up overhead. So we don't want to crouch down here. Inhale, open and stack the shoulders. Reach that arm, get that nice stretch here. Obliques are working and getting stretched. Keep the lower body the same. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle. Take your time, move with your own breath, not my cues. Inhale to reverse exhale last one here inhale to reverse exhale side angle that lower body starting to scream a little bit we inhale this one we get to straighten that front leg and reverse triangle 
So now you should feel a nice stretch in this front hip as you're pushing into that left foot and right foot as equally as you can. Then you're gonna lean forward, reach, 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 reach. See where that hand lays. Then open the chest, stack the shoulders. Maybe that gaze can come up to the right thumb, but if not, that's okay. You can just look straight ahead or you can look down at the left big toe. One more deep breath in triangle. Now engaging our core. We're gonna inhale to reverse, bending that front knee. Exhale, windmill all the way down. Step it back, flow or push back down. We're facing dog. Once we're there, we're going to just take our legs into a nice wide stance. And it's okay if you step off the mat. Don't worry. No, not everybody's got big mat. And we're just, we're taking a, a wide-legged down dog. That's all it is. So we're staying right here. But we're just going to try to lean back into our heels a little bit more and get a little lighter in the hands. And then if you want, you can walk the hands a little bit closer coming into sort of that wide leg fold that we often do and you can release the head. We're not going super wide today. We're just taking a little inversion break. Then we're gonna walk the hands back out. Walk the feet back in the hip distance into your down dog. And we'll come into one more round, adding on a little bit here. All right, so coming into our down dog, we're gonna inhale that right leg up to the sky. One full breath here in our three-legged dog. Make sure you've got a little micro bend in that left knee. Back right foot is super active and flexed. Exhale, bring the knee towards the chest and then step it down. Same thing we're gonna add on. So opening up to that warrior two. Might be able to sink it a little bit lower this time now that the hips are opening. One more deep breath here. And then we're gonna come into reverse. So flip that front palm and come on back. Feel that nice stretch across that right hip. And then we're gonna exhale, come forward to side angle. Now, if you wanna take it a little bit deeper, that hand could come grab onto the calf or the ankle. But you'll notice that if as you come down, you start to curve and round, then you've gone too far. If you can have the hand on the ground or at the ankle or on the foot and still stack, then you're all right. All right, we're gonna flow this a little bit. Inhale to reverse. Exhale. Bring it forward. If you want a little extra challenge, you can play with not bringing the hands down to the leg, but back and behind our lower back. And then just bringing that hand down, but not quite to the ground. Last one here. Inhale to reverse. It's a lot of work on the core and the hips. So take it or leave it. Exhale. This time we inhale to reverse. Yay, we get to straighten that front leg. <sighs> Exhale. Pull the hips back as you lean forward, reach, reach, reach. Drop the hand, inhale that left hand up. Gaze can come down to the toe if you're working on balance. If you want a little challenge, bring it up to that left thumb. Here, once again, if you want to add a challenge, you can just bring that hand to the ground. Push the back of the hand against the leg, the leg pushes back, but you're using a lot more core to keep you there, maybe even not touching the ankle. Inhale, coming to reverse. Now we're gonna add on a little balancing pose here. So we're gonna come into our half moon. So I'll walk us through the steps. We're gonna come back forward, plant that right hand in front of outside of that right foot, and then I'm opening up into my half moon. Now both hands can be on the ground, and I can still stack my hips. Try and get that 90 degree angle. I can stay right here. I can play then maybe with just lifting that left hand to my hip. I might be able 
to lift it up. Last step is trying to lift that right hand almost all the way off the ground. Maybe the middle finger just touches the ground. One more deep breath. You got it, guys. All right, slowly with grace and control, coming all the way back to reverse. Exhale, windmill it down, step it back, either flow or push back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it go. Take it to the other side and then we'll take a break. Inhale, left leg rises, three-legged dog, one full breath. Come to step it in between the hands. Prepare that lower, or sorry, that back foot for warrior two. Windmill it up as you're ready. Warrior two, one more deep breath. Inhale, flip that front palm, coming to reverse. Lower body stays the same. Exhale, coming to your side angle, maybe bringing that hand lower. Lots of options, take what works for you. You can always stay right here. And then we come to flow. So inhale to reverse, maybe the hand comes behind the back. Exhale. Side angle, make it your own. Inhale to reverse. Exhale. We got one more. Inhale to reverse. Exhale, side angle. All right, as we reverse this time, we can straighten that front leg. And then we're gonna come forward. Reach, reach, reach. This hip pulls back and then drop it down into your triangle. So really think about your hips stacking on each other, not coming forward. If we're coming forward, bring that hand up. It's okay, it doesn't have to go so low. Wherever is best for you, where you can still stack those shoulders, stack the hips, push the shoulder blades together, and maybe gaze up to that top thumb. One more deep breath. Inhale, coming to reverse, bend that front leg. And then exhale, we're preparing for our half moon. Maybe both hands come down and we just lift that leg as much as we can. Maybe we can stack the hips right here. Maybe that right hand can come up to the hip. Maybe you can lift that hand all the way up. So gaze staying at the ground is going to give you the most stability. If you want to play even further, you can try to bring that gaze up to that right thumb. Maybe you can lift that left hand almost all the way off the ground. One more deep breath. And we're slowly going to return all the way to reverse. Exhale. Windmill it down. You're doing great. Step it back. Last little flow here before we take our break. Downward facing dog. And then you can drop the knees down. Come into, I'll give you two options. One, child's pose. If you want to keep opening the shoulders, you can come into puppy pose. Hips stay up. Less restful, but maybe more of a good stretch for you. Either way, wherever we are, let's let that heart really melt down into the mat and really connect with that intention, with our breath. Surrendering. We're working hard today. <laughs> we do have one more standing flow where I'll just give Little, it's very similar to our last flow, just give a couple little ways where you can maybe extend yourself in those poses. And then we'll come into some inversion fun before we cool down. So if you would like to come into this third and final flow, you can come into your down dog. If you want to hang out in child's pose or make your own little practice, feel free to do that too. It's all optional. So you're going to go ahead and come into down dog if you'd like to take our third and final flow. 
We'll inhale that right leg up, three-legged dog. You can stay right here. We're gonna go ahead and open the hip. Let the heel drop towards the bum. Point the knee up to the sky. You should feel a really nice hip opener in that right hip flexor here. One more deep breath. And then as you exhale, you're gonna bring that knee forward. Step in between the hands. Drop that back heel down, coming into warrior two. Sink it down, maybe even a little lower, trying to get that bottom of your thigh here parallel with the mat. Gaze out over that right middle finger, keeping this nice, strong base here. We're gonna inhale, flip that front palm, come to reverse. Side extension here. Exhale, coming to your side angle. Inhale to reverse, maybe that hand's behind the back. Maybe it stays there. Exhale, side angle. Inhale to reverse. Now you can take two more flows, or if it's available for you, we'll come into the bind. So you bring that hand under and connect with the hands. Try to stack the shoulders. One more deep breath here if you're taking the bind, or you can keep flowing. Inhale, release the bind. Come forward, we'll all straighten that front leg, reverse triangle. Exhale, reach forward, drop the hand down, gazing up to that left finger. If it's available for you, you're gonna play with not having the hand on the leg or the ankle, you're just using your core here. Next inhale, coming to reverse. We're gonna try to come really smoothly into our half moon. So as you're ready, bringing yourself forward, maybe no hand touching the ground, maybe play with that gaze. It's quite challenging. Take your time, we got two more deep breaths here. You can do it. All right, slow with control, coming back to reverse. Exhale, windmill it all the way down, slow or push back. All in downward facing dog, deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it go. Last side, inhale, left leg up. Open that hip maybe, point the knee up, let that heel bend towards the bum. Just enjoying that hip opener there. As you exhale, bring that knee to chest, step it through, preparing for warrior two. Opening the arms up, gaze over, left middle finger, maybe you can go a little lower here. Inhale, flip that front palm to reverse, side stretch. And we begin to flow here, so exhale, Coming into your side angle. Inhale to reverse, maybe hand can come behind the back. Exhale, side angle. So we're slowly preparing maybe for that bind. Inhale to reverse. Exhale, you can come to bind or keep that flow going. If you're gonna bind, bring that hand under. Connecting the hands, open the heart. Gaze up. One more deep breath. Inhale, slowly release. We'll all come to that reverse triangle. Exhale, hand comes down. Triangle pose. One more deep breath. Inhale to reverse. We're preparing now for our half moon pose. Exhale, trying to Move and transition a little bit more smoothly there. Two deep breaths. Slowly with control, coming back to reverse. Exhale, windmill it all the way down. Step it back slowly. One last flow. We'll push it back down or facing dog. Slowly drop the knees down, coming back to child's pose. Let the heart melt down to the mat. 
Release the third eye into the mat. Connect with the breath and the intention. Maybe the hands come back along the sides and you just completely surrender to all that hard work you've just done. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. And slowly bring ourselves back up to our knees. We're going to come into shoulder stand today. Um, if you want to go to the wall and work on handstand, headstand, tripod, headstand, any of that, feel free to do that. I'll take us through doing shoulder stand, halasana or plow pose, and then fish pose for a little cool down here and to enjoy our inversion. Okay, so. We're going to come on our backs, lengthen the legs out. Let's just take a moment here. Maybe let the hips go side to side, just shake it out. All right, and then we're going to plant the hands. When I plant my hands, I kind of tuck my shoulders underneath, just like I would in Shavasana, just to let the heart open a bit more. From here, you can bend the knees and bring the feet up overhead. So we're coming into a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna push the hands into the mat, and then I'm gonna, you might need to like kind of rock the feet to give yourself some momentum, and that's fine. And then pushing myself back as far as I can. It's okay if the feet don't touch here, but then I'm gonna use my hands to walk up towards my shoulders as much as I can. And this will start to kind of push my legs straight. So now I have a tiny space in between my chin and my chest. And we tend to let our feet be over kind of like this. So work as much as you can to straighten the legs so that we stack ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders. And yes, it takes some core work. So if you're still here, that's okay. You're still getting the benefits of the inversion. Trying to take about five to 10 deep breaths here, but if at any time you need to lower down, feel free to do so. Just do it with control and breath. Zipping the legs together. I'm going to take one more deep breath here. And I'm going to slowly try to let those feet come overhead. So I'm hinging at my hips. And hopefully they'll hit the ground. Some days they do for me, some days they don't. If they don't, it's fine. You just keep your hands on the lower back and support. If they do come to the ground, which mine aren't today, so you can lower the hands to the, the ground. For me, it's just not happening today, and that's okay. So I'm going to keep my hands back here and just let the knees and the legs fall as much as they can. One more deep breath here. And halasana, our plow pose. All right, and then I'm going to bring my hands to the ground slowly, as slow as possible. I'm letting my bum come back down to the mat, keeping the legs as close to the face as I can. Now as my bum gets close, I'm gonna move my hands under my hip bones. And then as the legs come down, I'll come up onto my elbows. So my elbows are tucking under my body, my legs are pointing straight, my toes are pointing. And then I'm gonna drop my head back into fish pose. So opening up the throat, the heart, the chest, but I want to keep the lower body active. So I'm zipping my legs together and pointing my toes. About three more rounds of breath here. Slowly gonna lift the head back up. So I can untuck the elbows. 
then lower back down and release the hands up from under the bum. So from here, we're gonna bring the knees into the chest. Give ourselves a little rock side to side if it feels okay. Maybe rock out the head too, release the neck. And then I'm gonna let the knees fall over to one side, creating a 90 degree angle. Open the arms out to a T and then gaze over that opposite shoulder. Taking a couple deep breaths here. It's really great to take deep breaths in a twist. Massages our internal organs, helps with digestion. Next, inhale, bring the knees through center. Exhale, let the knees fall over to the opposite side. Switch the gaze, maybe just close the eyes. Deep breaths. Next, inhale, we'll slowly come back to center. You're gonna bring the soles of the feet together, reach through for the soles, and push the knees out and away. So coming into a butterfly posture, but we're reclined. Push the knees away from the body, pull the feet in. You should feel a really nice stretch on that inner thigh. Then from here, you can let one leg lift and the other leg lift and you're in a happy baby. Maybe, you're, maybe you want to stretch one leg straight and then the other. Maybe rocking doesn't feel great and you just want to push the tailbone down and pull the feet in. And from here, we'll take about a minute to take any last postures that feel good for your body. So if you want to take another maybe deeper twist, you could cross the legs. Or you might want to take one more inversion or you might want to just get ready for Shavasana, and that's great too, but giving you about 10 rounds of breath to go through any last postures. So slowly taking your time to come into your Shavasana. Once you're there in your corpse pose, tucking the shoulders in slightly so that you can really feel an open chest. A little tuck of the tailbone so you can really lengthen out the lower body as well. Then letting the arms and legs open to the side. Relaxing starting down at the feet, through the ankles, the calves, releasing through the knees, the thighs, the hips, letting the glutes go, releasing up through the core, letting that breath return to a natural state. Letting the chest and shoulders fall and releasing all the way out to the fingertips. Maybe giving a little tuck of that chin so you can relax the lower neck and the spine, releasing the jaw, all the tiny muscles in the face, releasing the eyeballs, the tongue, and then following that relaxation all the way up through the crown. Maybe taking one deep inhale and sighing it out. Staying here with your breath your intention in remaining present during this very important final pose of surrender.
Swami Rama used to say, do what is yours to do, don't do what is not yours to do. As simple these words may sound to your, ear, your ears, and yet they are profound to our understanding of surrender. As we are able to let go of what we can't change, we are able to grow more and more into our unique gift and contribution to life itself. There is something that is ours to do, and whether it is large or small, it is our contribution to the whole of humanity. As we discern where our path lies and then surrender to that awareness, we will begin to taste freedom and joy in a way we never dreamed possible. Slowly begin to deepen your breath, inviting tiny movements into the fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles, eventually bringing the arms up overhead, inhaling, lengthening from fingers to toes. And as you exhale, bringing the knees into the chest and rolling on to your favorite side, pausing the first posture our bodies ever knew. Taking a moment here to find something or someone in your life that brings you so much gratitude. Let the thought of that person or thing feel every cell of your body with just joy and light. And let that feeling of peace resonate out from you into the world. Gently, as you're ready, bringing yourself up to a comfortable seated posture. Inhaling the arms up overhead. Exhaling your hands to heart center. And bring palms together creating energy here and heat and transferring this energy over our eyes. May we use this energy to see the beauty within ourselves and our world. Once more, creating that energy, we'll transfer it over our ears. May we use this energy to hear positive thoughts about ourselves and our world. One last time, transferring this energy over our heart. May we use this energy to live our truth, live our truth, and surrender all that we cannot control. One last deep inhale, circling the arms, gathering this energy you've cultivated, pulling it down to your heart. Namaste. Namaste.